In this lesson, we'll be discussing hybridization and bonding scheme. This is part one. The question reads, write a hybridization and bonding scheme for bromine trifluoride, which has the chemical formula BrF3. Keep in mind that in chemistry, orbital hybridization, or what we call hybridization generally, is the concept of mixing atomic orbitals into new hybrid orbitals. And these new hybrid orbitals make it suitable for the pairing of electrons to form chemical bonds according to the valence bond theory. So that's what we're doing here. In our particular case, we have the molecule BrF3. The central atom will be Br, and it will be bonded to fluorine atoms. Fluorine has a valence of seven, so does bromine. So we have seven times four, 28 electrons to work with. I wanna start by creating the Lewis structure before we can actually come up with this information. So 28 electrons in this molecule. We've already used up one, two, three times two, six. So we have 22 more to work with. And I will distribute those 22 electrons around the peripheral atoms first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And the other four will be around bromine. Next, I'll calculate the bonding groups. And that is determined based on the central atom here. One, two, three, three bonding groups. And the central atom has two lone pairs. Adding this up, we get five. Using this information, in particular five, that represents the electron groups, we can use this chart. Let's take a look at it. And you'll notice that if you have five electron groups around a central atom, you're dealing with a trigonal bipyramidal. And that has a hybridization scheme of sp3d. So that answers the first part. And just to be clear that you understand, the central atom bromine uses three sp3d hybrid atomic orbitals to bond the fluorine atoms and to hold its lone pairs. The next thing that we have to do is sketch the molecule. And we begin with the central atom and its orbitals. We also want to indicate the overlap with the appropriate orbitals on the terminal atoms. So we'll write down Br, and since it has this shape, the electrons that are bonding with one of the fluorines will be represented by these bubbles. The lone pairs will also be represented by their own bubbles. And we also have that third fluorine like this. The fluorines as well will have their own bubbles because they're sharing an electron. Now this space right here, this space and this space is being occupied by two electrons, one spinning up and one spinning down. So we represent that by an up arrow, down arrow, up, down, up, down. Remember, these are lone pairs. And when you have an overlap of orbitals that are pointing directly towards one another, as you see here, it's called a sigma bond. In contrast, pi bonds are formed from the overlap of parallel p orbitals on adjacent atoms. So the lobe of one atomic orbital overlaps another. That doesn't occur here. That's the symbol we use for sigma, which is the Greek letter. Also, you may represent these lone pairs with the same up and down arrows as we did over here. That right there represents the answer to question number one. In question number two, we're asked, write a hybridization and bonding scheme, this time for xenon tetrafluoride. And it has the chemical formula shown on your screen. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll write down the chemical formula again, and we'll presume that xenon is the central atom. It is being bonded to four fluorines. Xenon, of course, is a noble gas, but in this particular case, it's hypervalent. So now let's count the valence electrons. Fluorine has seven times four, that's 28, plus eight of xenon, which makes it 36. We've already used up one, two, three, four times two, eight. So subtracting these, we have 28 electrons to distribute. We'll start with the peripheral atoms. So the fluorines, one, two, three, four, five, six. Another six here, that makes it 12, 18, 24. And the other four will be around xenon, making it hypervalent. Xenon therefore has one, two, three, four bonding groups and two lone pairs. Adding that up, it's six. We'll focus right here, and what we're dealing with is an octahedral. So that last row right here is the octahedral, and the hybridization scheme is sp3d2. Let's go ahead and draw this out now. Xenon right here, and 
we will have an electron bubble here and another one over here. We have these electrons which will bond with fluorine. I'll try my best to show this in 3D. And another like this, so pretend that that's a, an axis and so is that and so is that. Then we can write the fluorines. They too have the electron bubble. I'll show the up and down spin of the electrons here and there. They can also be represented in these lone pairs. And since we have single bonds happening in this location, in that location, that location, and that location, these are all referred to as sigma bonds. So just to be clear, xenon uses six sp3 d2 hybrid atomic orbitals to bond the four fluorine atoms and to hold the two lone pairs. And there you have it, two examples on how to write the hybridization and bonding scheme of molecules.